The market may be soaring, but consumer spending is stalling and prices on virtually everything climbing. So Gary B, why again are we seeing this disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street? Well, Brenda, I think there's uh, four factors. And uh, the first is that where else are you going to go right now? You know, bond yields are low. People are not going to put it into real estate. They've been suffering through that. So, I mean, stocks right now, I guess, are kind of the best athlete. The second is the Fed is still not tightening. They're talking like they might tighten, but we still have some pretty cushy money. Third, the economy is slowly improving. You know, I know Chuck's going to like to say that's all Obama's uh, um, you know, backing, but whether he's before, you know, for it or against it or whatever, the economy is slowly improving. And I guess the, the fourth thing is there's still not a lot of bulls out there, Brenda. We're still climbing this wall, worry. When people are going crazy and they can't wait to put money in the market, then I think we'll have top down. But, but, you know, Tracy, a lot of people, a lot of regular guys have not been experiencing this right. run up. They haven't been in the market. What they have been experiencing, high wages and very, I mean, low wages and very high prices. Absolutely. The volume has been anemic for a very long time. So Main Street is not in this market. Wages have seen barely an increase over the last couple of years. So your wages are not going up. And to your point, Brenda, prices are. Commodity prices through the roof on most things that we need in our households. And anyone that potentially has stuff in the market, people that do have money in their 401ks, are looking for preservation, not capital appreciation at this point. Because they've been burned so many times, they just want to hold on to everything they have. And that's probably why, that's exactly why Main Street's not experienced this. Jonas, companies are doing pretty well, though. That's Main Street. That pain you're, yeah, there's no question about it. that pain you're feeling at the barbecue on Labor Day week, that's going into the pockets of some companies. And I will say, I don't think we've ever had a, a record in the stock market without record consumer prices at the same time. The two have a little relationship to them. If you had prices going down, it's almost always a bad thing. It's almost always a recession, and stock prices would almost all be lower. I'm not talking about hyperinflation in the 70s. Those, that is the sign that they can raise prices and have their profit margins go up and raise earnings. It's one of the right. things. Now, eventually, it hopefully will cut to catch up to your pocketbook. Well, you'll get a raise, and then you'll be able to pay it. You won't even notice the prices are higher, hopefully. But right, right. now, it's a little, it feels hurt, hurtful to some people. Okay, John, what do you think? Well, I think that Gary B's right. Uh, this is a Fed-driven market. Uh, since 2000, what Tracy's talking about is correct as well. Wages have not gone up, and President Obama certainly has continued on the same policies that have destroyed the middle class, that have helped the 1%. The 1% has gotten very uh, rich, but because of that low interest rates environment, we're seeing uh, inflation start to pick up slightly, right. which is hurting the average consumer out there. Not the guys in the stock market, but right. the average American out yeah. there. Okay, Chuck, does it surprise you that Main Street may not be experiencing the same um, celebration that Wall Street is. No, it don't surprise me at all. I mean, we are systematically watching the demise of our middle class, and we have for the last few decades because we've outsourced our middle class jobs, our manufacturing jobs. We've become a service-based economy, and because the regular working folks, like the folks I grew up with, folks that dress like me every day to go to work, if you're going to be a waiter at Olive Garden, don't have anybody speaking for them. They, Wall Street's got plenty of influence in this town. The only thing bipartisan in Washington, D.C. is green, is money, and that runs this town, and those people have lots of voices. Who's speaking for the average, everyday American who has to pay a little bit more every day who hasn't seen real wage increases in many years. That's the basic problem with our government and it has been for a long time. Okay, that's got to be the last word. Thanks guys. And thank you to Tracy and Chuck for joining us.